As though creating that perfect wax seal impression wasn't enough, add in the stress of the USPS and you might decide that wax seals aren't worth it for you at all. In today's video, I am hoping to relieve some of that stress by talking about why wax seals are a little trickier to send in the mail, talk about a couple different ways that we can kind of avoid any problems, um, talk about the wax specifications that I recommend, and just prepare you overall for success as you mail your wax seal invitations or stationery. We all love some pretty snail mail, don't we? Now, in order to mail your beautiful stationery, wax seals or otherwise, you need to purchase stamps and the stamps pay for the service of the delivery. Now, in order to make sure that the stamp isn't reused, the post office sends the entire envelope through a machine that will cancel the stamp, which is just the black lines that you see there. The problem arises when you add a wax seal. It's like a boulder being thrown into a path. It can get caught, even rip an envelope, or come right off. Now, I haven't had much problem if the envelopes are thinner. This exact envelope went through the mail, no special system or precautions made, and it came out just fine. We'll talk a little bit more about why later, but for now, just know that thinner envelopes aren't as much of an issue. Now, the best way to avoid the machine altogether is to hand cancel your postage. There are two main things that different post offices require for this. Um, some will require that you hand stamp it yourself, and so you just ask at the desk, and others will require that you also purchase a specific stamp. So this is a non-machine. It's just a little bit more because you're paying for extra labor. I literally just got this in the mail, but this is what can happen if you don't hand cancel. See how it took a bite out of your wax? This is not what we wanna see. I normally see this with thicker envelopes. A thicker envelope is already making a tight squeeze through the machine, um, which has a limit of a quarter inch thick. Bigger than that, and the USPS considers it a parcel, which is a totally different video. We'll just stick with wax seals for now. And I do recommend taking a finished envelope to your post office and just saying like, what are your rules for this? I would like this hand canceled. I like to avoid the machine. What's the guidelines that you have for me? Um, every post office is different in the US, at least in my experience, but it is worth it to make sure that your stuff doesn't kind of run into problems. Another way to avoid the problems with the machine is to use inner and outer envelopes. So the inner envelope has a beautiful wax seal on it, but when you stick it into the outer envelope, which is slightly bigger, that envelope kind of creates a barrier around your entire stationery in order to protect it. So not only does it protect the envelope from any dirt or grime, but it will also get rid of that lip of the wax seal and create just a smooth transition across the entire piece. Now the final little bit of security that we're gonna to add to our stationery before we send it off into the world is by making sure we have quality materials and are using good technique. So we're starting off with good envelopes that aren't going to tear apart. And of course the technique used to apply your wax to your envelope matters as well. One of my favorite techniques is to use a hot glue gun with wax sticks and then apply that to the envelope. If you're not sure how to do this, I'll have a full tutorial linked down below. Another way that I really love to apply if I'm just doing one or two envelopes is to use a spoon. And for this technique, I prefer to use the designated wax beads, but you can also cut up the glue sticks as well. My very favorite recently, which might just mean that I'm getting kind of lazy, is that I like to use these pre-made wax seals with the adhesive on the back. They are fabulous, especially if you're doing a large batch of stationery. You just take the backing off just like a sticker, line it up exactly the way that you want it to go on your stationery, and place it down. Once it's down, it will hold really well. I have had no problems with these in the mail. I actually haven't had any problems with wax seal in general in the mail. Um, I'm hoping, I hope that me sharing the, these tips and these advice isn't going to scare you away from doing this. These are the problems that could happen, but if you are careful and take these precautions, you will have little to no problems while you're mailing your stationery. Back to the adhesive stickers. If you're the kind of person who likes to individually stamp your wax seals, like this marbled seal, you can purchase just the adhesive backings and so you kind of are making your own sticker. That's great if you want to enjoy the therapy of creating your own stamps, but you want to be able to individually place everything or you want to add some pizzazz like these marbled wax seals. Um, and if you haven't made these before and are interested, I'll have that tutorial linked down below as well. Last but certainly not least, let's go back to quality materials and talk about wax. So right here you can see a stamp that I gave to my son to play with and he put some Play-Doh in it. I found it after the Play-Doh had dried and I thought it was a beautiful illustration for quality wax. So right here you can see how as I bend this more modern style wax, it is bending with my fingers, but the Play-Doh inside of it is very hard and brittle. 
This is more like traditional wax where it used to, if it would bend, it would kind of break and it was just very hard and brittle. I don't really know how else to describe it, but the quality modern wax will bend with your envelope and it's very strong, so it's not tearing all over the place, um, but it will bend in order to keep its shape and stay on, even if it goes through the machine. The hand canceling is a wonderful precaution, but again, I haven't had a lot of problems if I'm using quality supplies. And this is why I am not on the crayon bandwagon. I do not recommend using crayons. They are literally designed to disintegrate and they leave marks every time they touch something. So it could get your other stationery messy, could make it hard to read the addresses. Just avoid this if you want to send it in the mail. Another thing that I've been hearing lately is using regular candle wax, um, again, designed to disintegrate. And so not a great idea for something that you want to last or to hold your envelope in place. If you're gonna skimp anywhere when you're mailing wax seals, do not skimp on the wax. I will have a couple of my favorite formulas linked down below. I trust that this video has been a helpful guide as you begin your wax seal mailing journey. If you have any other questions regarding mailing wax seals or just wax seals in general, leave a comment there below. I do try and check the comment section and respond to any questions as quickly as I can. I will also have a wealth of wax seal videos, everything from tutorials to oddly satisfying wax seal videos, and those will be linked down there. And as always, I do really appreciate it and wanna just say thank you for taking the time to comment, to like, and to share my videos with those who that you think would find it helpful. I hope that you're having a wonderful day and until next time, happy stamping.